expecting you. When I first started out directing, I had no interest in starting out in television. I was really a snob about TV. I wanted to direct movies. I didn't want to start in television. But when I saw the reality of the situation, you know, I was 20 years old, going on 21 at the time, and I've been offered a contract by a major studio here at Universal by Sid Sheinberg. And there wasn't a movie producer in the world that was going to give me a feature just because I wanted a direct film. And there were probably very few TV producers that would have given me a television show. So I quickly sort of reformed my kind of grandiose outlook and decided that I would fight real hard to start in television, kind of like a training ground. And if I did good there, maybe somebody would give me a movie. So I began training in television. And my first few shows were, God, the first thing I did, of course, was the Joan Crawford Night Gallery. My abiding concern, Doctor, and my singular preoccupation is myself. 11 hours or 12, fewer or more, it makes no difference. I want to see something. Trees, concrete, buildings, grass, airplanes, color! Sid Scheinberg kind of muscled me through the producers who weren't sure they wanted to hire me for that, because I was really a kid. I was 21, 22 years old at the time. It was crazy. After that, I didn't work for about a year. I actually took off a year from my contract and just did some writing. Came back a year later because a friend of mine, Gerald Friedman, was producing a series called The Psychiatrist, starring Roy Thinnes, and asked me if I wanted to direct a couple of them. And he actually offered me two out of six. He had a six-show commitment, and I directed the first one and the one in the middle. And that was a great experience. That was fantastic. And then I realized, wow, you can be creative in television, even though the time pressure is enormous and you've got to finish these, you know, these hour shows. In those days, we had five days for an hour. And yet, you could get a lot done in a day's work. And of course, you know, it wasn't an eight hour or 10 hour day. You know, we were shooting 14, 15 hour days just to get all the shots in. But it was a great experience for me to start out in TV that way. The Joan Crawford experience wasn't so pleasant because I had a lot of interference from everybody you can possibly imagine trying to save my ass. I didn't think it needed saving, but they did. And I, I went along with the ride. I realized, well, maybe it does need saving. Maybe I'm not doing a very good job. And I had a lot of people giving me advice. And I pretty much didn't want to be a maverick independent filmmaker screaming, I'm going back to New York to make underground films. So I just pretty much played by their rules. But in an interesting way, Jerry Friedman's offer for me to direct this hour episode of The Psychiatrist with no restrictions. He just said, hey, do whatever you want. Make it into a little art film. You can be new wave, you can be avant-garde, you know, as esoteric as you want to be. Do what you want to do with it. Wow, you know, that was a wonderful piece of friendship and advice. And that's exactly what I did. I made a very strange esoteric show out of the hour. And it, it, it proved to me that television was fun. It was a nice place to start working. I've been expecting you. It was inevitable. I was a journeyman TV director, and I was doing not a lot of shows. I didn't do a lot of television. I tried to pick and choose the shows that, in a strange way, it was kind of a conundrum, a catch-22. I was trying to pick and choose the, cho the shows they would offer me because most television producers weren't interested in working with this kid. They were much more interested in the Christian Ibees and the Alex Singers and Virgil Vogel, who was a friend of mine and helped me a lot when I first got started. Richard Benedict, actor-turned-TV director, a wonderful director. I mean, these are really, you know, fine directors, but they had proven themselves again and again. So the television producers of the early 70s went to them before ever going to me. And on the few shows I was offered, I didn't care for it. I didn't like the scripts, didn't like the, the series themselves. But after kind of, you know, starving <laughs> and needing, needing to make a little money, I went back to Sid Schomburg and I said, okay, Sid, I'll work. I'll, I'll just, I'll just I'll, you, know, you know what I'm saying? I'll just sort of, um, I'll, work for, I'll work for my dinner. And he said, well, were you journeyman? And I said, yes, I'll journeyman. So he got me a Marcus Welby. Nobody except Mr. Craddock here, the school nurse and your homeroom teacher, will know anything about the hemophilia. The boys and girls in your class will be told absolutely nothing. But it's up to you to explain to them, or, or not to explain to them, why you'll be excused from certain activities. Yeah, I can, I can handle it. That was a great experience for me. 
And I never directed Robert Young, but I was able to talk to him. You know what I'm saying? I was able, because he had his character. I'm not going to inform him or give him revisionist information about his character of Marcus Welby. But he was very, very gracious to me and not resentful of my age, which was such a, a problem in those days, especially in television, where the average age of a crew member was 55 years old. And it was all the great people from the golden age of movies that were now working in television that had already worked with all the great directors and they didn't suffer fools or young people that well. So there was a lot of resistance to age in those days. So I was grateful when anybody gave me a job in television. No matter how pedestrian the concept of the show appeared, I was still able to do a couple of shots in an hour Marcus Welby that I was proud of. And I said, oh, I got away with that. Nobody fired me. That's great. And then when I met Bill Lincoln and Richard Levinson, who were the creators and producers of Columbo, and Stephen Bochco, who was writing for them at the time, and they asked me if I would do the first show of the season. It was a great honor to be invited to do that first show, and when I read the script by Bochco, and I guess story by Lincoln Levinson, I thought, man, this is the best script anybody has ever given me, ever, to direct. So I treated that like a little mini movie, and I made the movie with the psychology of a film director, not a TV director. I said, I'm going to make this look like, you know, within the time they're giving me, I'm going to make it look like a million bucks. They're giving me $130,000 for this hour. I'm going to make it look like a million bucks. Is this your partner's handwriting? Well, I think I can prove it is. Maybe I ought to read this to you. Idea for a Melville book, perfect alibi. A wants to kill B drives B to a remote house and has him call his wife in city, tells her he's working late at the office. Bang, bang. Columbo was a great experience for me and was as close as I had ever come to making a movie. Well, it's about time, Charlie. What I tried to bring to TV was a lesser emphasis on the close-up because the movies I learned from were really about master shots and letting the audience kind of look at the overview and kind of be their own film editor sometime. I used to love those old movies like Orson Welles, certainly, and John Ford, you know, shot wide, Howard Hawks shot wide. But when Hawks and Ford went in for the close-up, it was to tell a story. It was to drum home a point. And they used the close-up as a powerful tool of narrative storytelling. Television seemed to use a close-up because screens were so small, they wanted people to see what the actors were saying. They wanted to get mouth movement so they would shoot all the TV shows like that. So when I came to television, I kind of went back to wider shots. And it got me, in a strange way, you know, noticed, uh, simply because I was shooting wider than most television directors. So I look back at it and say, you know, I was so hungry back then. I was so ambitious. I was so excited about having been given this chance. It was a great experience for me to start out in TV that way. Mm -hmm.